soul become the mind and soul of a Chikota girl, you cannot afford him the happiness which is his august right. My mind? Are you going to make me mad, too? Is that what you're going to do to me? Now, now, you will be no more mad than you are at this moment. You will just be taught the Chikota way. Oh, go away. Go away. Don't go near me. You <laughs> must overcome this hysteria, senorita. You are making my work very difficult. It can be made so simple. What are you going to do? What is it you want of me? I am going to remove your soul, your mind, if you prefer, from your body for a time. You mean my brain? You're going to take my brain away from me? Judith has been told her destiny. She has fallen into the hands of one of the masters of the City of the Living Dead. He has told her she has been selected as the girl who will sit on the golden throne at the right hand of the evil high priest, Maya Nahib. Because she rebels, the master has just said, I am going to remove your soul, your mind if you prefer from your body for a time. You, you mean my, my brain? No, senorita. Your physical being will not be harmed. No mar, no blemish shall ever come to it. It is the inner person, the soul of which I speak. Oh, no, no. And there will be no discomfort to you. In the sacred city, there is waiting the body of a young and lovely Chikota girl. Into that body, your soul, your mind, all that gives you individual comprehension will be placed. Why, why don't you kill me? Let me die. That is very <laughs> foolish. It will only be a temporary exchange. The Chikota girl will become you and live here in this cell beneath the stairway to the sun, while you will become the Chikota girl. You will live the life of a Chikota in the sacred city until your mind and soul have become the life and soul of an Indian. No, let me die. Let me die. And when the time shall come, you will be given back this lovely body of yours, and I shall lead you to Maya Nahib and place you by his side upon the throne of gold. Empress of the world. Why? Why? Hush now, senorita. You must not be frightened. Come, I will show you how very simple it will all be. What are you going to do? Show you something that will ease your mind. Show you what lies in the next room. It will help you to understand what is to happen to you. The childish science of modern civilization would give much to understand what lies beyond this door. Enter. What? What is it? Where are we? Is, is it a tomb? No, it is just a room where men rest from this world for a time. Uh, are all these men dead? Here, come closer, senorita. Look at them. Why? Why, they're Spaniards. And, and they're dressed. Dressed as the conquerors of South America, dressed in the year 1521. See the armor, the swords, the gay dress. They are the conquerors of Chile. But they're all dead. They are as men who have laid themselves down for a rest. They are not dead, senorita. Not dead? What are you telling me? Men 400 years old, not dead. They are not dead. Their souls, their minds are in the sacred city of the living dead. Is that what's going to happen to me? We keep their bodies here. You mean their minds are in the bodies of the Chakota Indians? That is it exactly. Oh, no. You no. are the first outsider ever to see this wonderful phenomena, a science which has descended to us from the beginning of time, passed from hand to hand by the Chakota masters. Please, please take me back to my father. Do not ask the impossible, Senorita English. Come, it is time our task was begun. You will sit here on this stone bench. No, no. What, what are you going to do? Sit down, please. It will do no good to fight against it. My mind is many times stronger than yours. No, 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 no. I, I won't look at you. I won't look now, at you. No, no. You are going to do what I tell you. You are going to do what I ask of you. You are now going to lift up your head. 
lift up your head you are going to look into my eyes into my eyes you are going to sit beside my anaheb on the throne of gold in the city of the sun empress of the world you are going to be empress of the world <laughs> Captain, Captain Friday. Here I am, Skip. Where's Dr. English? Right here with Skip. What was that noise, Captain? There's someone in here with us. <laughs> Sounds like he's over yonder. It's so blame dark, you can't see nothing. Moves around as though he had wings. First he's here, then over there. And not a sound. Not a footstep. Stand still. Listen. <laughs> Captain, there's a cell here to our right. Let's shut ourselves in. I don't like this fellow, whatever he is. Yeah, he can't get out of through these iron bars. It's in here with us. Who are you? What do you want? Answer me. Who are you? I am nameless. Oh, it spoke, Captain. It spoke. No name? What do you mean by that? Nameless. Nameless. What are you doing here? It is my punishment. The brothers to the living dead decreed it. So long as life remains in me... I am to roam these black caverns. So you have eyesight. Can you see in this dark? <laughs> as well as you see in the sunshine. What do you want with us? <laughs> I, I have driven you into this cell to talk with you. To make you suffer as I have suffered. The man's mad. Uh, perhaps you too will be mad before you leave this place. Now, what can you do to us? There's three of us against you. Ah, I can tell you of the fate that awaits one near and dear to you. Hey, you mean Judith? You can tell us about Judith? Easy, Skip. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you where to find her. Thank heavens. Where is she? Where? But, but first... Hear what they are doing to her. What is happening to her this very minute. Oh, tell us, tell us. Are, are they torturing her? Do you know what they are doing? They are taking her mind, her soul from her body. They are giving her soul to a Chakota Indian girl. What have I the done to The Indian these... girl will wear this white soul, the soul of your daughter until it is warped and deformed to fit the Chakota code of life. Oh, I don't believe it. It's a lie. The masters can do strange things with the soul. Take it from a man and send it where he please. <laughs> I've got my revolver trained on you. Open this door, I'll show you. <laughs> you, you have no weapon. I, I, I can see. <laughs> Your hands are empty. It's no use, Captain. He has eyes like a cat. Thousands and thousands of men have been brought to these dungeons for their souls. Plucked of their souls. They, they, they use souls in the city of the living dead. Oh, stop. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they call it the river of souls. The river of souls. Doctor. Did you hear that? The River of Souls. Mrs. Santos mentioned that. Yes. She thought it was the passage to the sacred city. <laughs> a, a, a passage for souls. A passage no one has ever seen. A passage for souls. Poor, pitiful souls. Sometimes there are so many that the light of the sun cannot shine through. Surely this is the maddest thing I have ever heard. Yes, but how much of it's madness and how much the truth? He knows about Judith. And now, now, Dr. English... I'm going to reveal to you the hiding place of your daughter. You're going to let us out of here? When I have finished. But listen, you will find her in the room beneath the stairway to the sun. The room at the head of the underpassage to the sacred city. The underpassage. That must be the passage the werewolf took Judith into. And you will reach it through the torture chamber. Yes, yes, we've been there. We know where that is. Then hurry. Else you will be too late. <laughs> I give you your freedom. 
Yeah, the door's open. Come on, quickly. Hello, where are you? Yeah, he's gone, vanished. Tom, no time to look for him. We've got to find Judith. All right, up the stairs to the torture chamber. It's about a hundred steps up, if I remember. Look out for these skeletons chained to the wall. Don't step on them. Don't think of the dead now. Our object is to get Judith. Now, save your breath. Run on your tiptoes. Look, a lighted chamber up ahead. Hey, it's a torture chamber. I recognize it. Not so fast, Skip. When there's a light, they're liable to be guards. Easy now. No noise. See anything, Captain? No. Place is empty. Not a sound but the dripping water. The light we saw is from the burning torch in the wall. There's an opening in the wall on the other side of the room. Yeah, wait till I get that torch. We'll need that light. All right, come on. I'll lead the way. Here's our passage. That madman knew what he was talking about. If we get caught with his light, we're sunk. There's no way of putting it out quickly. I wonder how far we got to go. Look ahead. We're running into a cul-de-sac. A blank wall. Then we've been fooled. Nothing of the kind. There's a door. I suppose it's locked. And we'll soon see about that. No. Yeah, it's unlocked. It's a huge stone chamber. Easy now. In we go. Judith. Judith. Where is she? She isn't here. Oh, we've been tricked. Nothing here. Wait a minute. What's that behind the stone bench? Why, it... It's a body. What? Captain, they've killed her. They've killed Judas. Shut up, you fool. It's the body of a man. You, you sure? Look for yourself. Snap out of it now, Skip. Captain, hold your torch over here. Yeah. Look. It's one of the masters. Masters? One of Mayan Nahib's right-hand men. You can tell by his dress. Yeah, stabbed through the heart. And... Well, look. It's my sacrificial knife. Your knife, Doctor? Yes, yes. You remember, Captain. The one I had in San Francisco. Are you certain, Doctor? How did it get here? Well, yeah. I know it's mine. Look. There are my, my initials on the handle. But what's it doing here? Mrs. Santos saw it while she was in the house. She begged me for it. Said it might be of use to us. That it had as great religious significance. And you gave it to her? Yes. Well, oh. then Mrs. Santos has turned out to be a murderess as well as a traitor. Yes, but what about Judith? We've got to find Judith. knife carried by Mrs. Santos has slain one of the masters. But where is she now? Where is the werewolf? And above all, where is Judith? Next week at this same hour, you will hear episode eight of The Land of the Living Dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. 
If you like blood and thunder, come with me. When last we were with Judith English, she was in the hands of one of the masters of the Brotherhood of the Living Dead. This priest had taken her to a room beneath the magnificent stairway to the sun and was in the act of stealing her mind, as he explained it, to give to a Chakota Indian girl in the sacred city, the stronghold of Maya Nahi. Then we followed Captain Friday, Skip Turner, and Dr. English to the same room, only to find that Judith was gone and the body of the master on the floor, an Indian sacrificial knife in his back. Dr. English recognized the knife as one given to Mrs. Santos by him before the party had left San Francisco. The master dead. Another pawn removed from Maya Naib's side of the board. That Santos woman is a terror. She's double-crossed us at every turn. Now she's begun to murder her Chakota friends. Yeah, but what about Judith? We gotta find Judith. Well, it's a cinch if we can get our hands on Mrs. Santos, Judith won't be far off. I hope you're right, Captain Friday. Anything's better than the brothers to the living dead. Yeah, I'm not so sure, Dr. English. That Santos woman is my idea of a perfect double-cross. Well, there's no use in standing here. Let's go back through the torture chamber and up to the stairway to the sun. Yeah, yeah, they must have taken Judith toward the sacred city. Come on, come on. Just a moment. Hold that torch down here, Captain. I... Dr. English, you ain't gonna rob a dead body. Skip. If there's a flashlight on the body, I don't know why we shouldn't have it. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I shouldn't have said it. Nerves, I guess. Well, think before you say anything like that again. Find anything, Doctor? Yes. Yes, there's a flashlight. A gun, too. Great. Which do you want, Captain? Perhaps I'd better take the gun. Good, I'll carry the flash. Skip wouldn't care for anything off a dead body anyway, I don't suppose. Hey, I said I was sorry. It's all right, Skip. Good lesson. Skip, put that reed torch back on the wall. We won't need it now. Yeah, sure. You'll have to lead the way, Doctor, if you're going to carry the light. I'll be right at your elbow. Very well. Keep close behind me, Skip. Right with you. Here we are in the torture chamber. Keep your voices down. There's a sharp echo in here. Man, listen to that water drip. Gets on my nerves worse every time I hear it. I wonder how many centuries it's been dripping on that stone chair. Yeah, or how many heads it has pounded into madness. Ah. Well, we're past that. With a skip? Sure. All right, now, up the stairs we go. Don't stumble over any of those skeletons chained to the wall. I've been trying to figure out our position, Captain. Well? Yeah. If this stairway in the heart of this mountain goes clear to the cone at this same slant, we've got two miles of steps to climb. Yeah, I'm beginning to feel like a mole. Seems like years since I've seen daylight. Think of the millions and millions of tons of dirt over our heads. Huh. Turn the light on the ceiling, will you, Doctor? Yeah. Ceiling's about 15 feet above our heads. Yeah. There's about a mile of dirt between us and fresh air and sunshine. Oh, Skip. Skip! Doctor, we've lost Skip. He's not behind me. Not behind you? No, he was here just a second. Ow, Captain! Shut the... I got you! I got you! Ow! Captain! Doc English, it's Tula! It's Tula! She's coming towards you! Grab her! It's Tula! Tula? Doctor, shoot your light on the stairway. There she is. Hold your flash on her. I'll get her. Look out, Captain. She'll be armed. Better keep your flashlight in her eyes so she can't see the shoot. Yeah. I'm going for her. <laughs> I got her. Made a flying leap. Give me a hand, Skip. She's fighting like a wild dog. She's got a knife. Stab me, would you? There, now. Now you stay put. Hate to sit on a lady. Skip, where the blazers are you? Here I am, boss. I'll take your belt. Tie her feet. Doctor, hold your flash on her face. Yeah, yeah it's too low, right? What a beautiful girl. Her feet are tied. Look out, now don't let loose of her hands. She's savage all the way through. Me let loose of these pretty hands? I guess not. I've been wanting to hold them ever since I first saw her. Yeah, sit up and act like a lady. What a strange pair of eyes. Looks as though she were in a trance. Yeah, looks savage to me. Tula, stand up. Unless you enjoy lying on those bones. What a wrestling match we had among those skeletons. Did you hear the chains rattling? <laughs> Won't talk, huh? Look here, Skip. How'd you happen to find Tula? Well, I heard a step behind us, and I slipped into a cell and let you fellas go on ahead. Yeah? Pretty soon this girl slipped by. She didn't see me. When she was between us, I grabbed her. She slipped out of your hands, huh? Slipped out? Look at my face. Good heavens, Skip. 
You've been sliced with a knife. No, it's just scratches. She's got nails like a cat. <laughs> Certainly spoiled your complexion for the time being. Wait until Judith sees you. Oh, I wish I knew where to look for Judith. And yeah, there's only one place to search, and that's the sacred city. Here, take this gun. It's the one the doctor gave me. Yeah, but you... Oh, I've got a neat little weapon Tula was carrying, and a knife besides. But what are we going to do with her now that we have her? Take her along with us. You're not hurt, are you, Tula? No, she's not hurt. I can tell by the way she glares. Man, how she hates us. But what'll we do with her? Well, personally, I'm going to cultivate her. She may be able to tell us something about Judith. She's a murderess. She killed Robert. Here, Skip. Take my belt off. I can't let loose of her hands. Yeah. There. Now, strap her arms behind her. Yeah. Good and tight. Yeah. Not too tight. You're hurting her. Well, why shouldn't I? You don't have to be a savage just because she is. Yeah, never mind. I'll take charge of her. Doctor, hang on to her for a moment while I undo the strap around her ankles. All right. She's got to walk. Yeah. There. Yeah, here's your belt back, Skip. Are we going on up the steps? Yes, of course. You go ahead, Doctor. I'll stay in the middle with Tula. Skip, you bring up the rear. Making me dizzy. I must be getting old. No, it ain't age, Doctor. We've climbed up more than a mile of these steps. Yeah. It's darn hard work if you ain't used to it. I'm winded myself. Yeah, matter of fact, I am too. Whew. Tula here seems to be the only one holding out. Well, yeah, she certainly ain't wasting her breath talking. She ain't said a word since we've taken her. Yeah. Not a quiver or a sob out of her. Chicota stoicism, I suppose. I don't believe she is a Chicota Indian. Hi, you, Tula? Ain't no use questioning her. She won't answer you. I think she will. Here, yeah. let's rest a moment. Oh. Hey, there's a <clears throat> cell on this landing. Oh. Should we go in there? Yeah, good idea. At least we'll be out of sight. <sighs> Open the door, Skip. Yeah. <sighs> George, good to rest a moment. Whew. Yeah, how's the girl? I think she's ready for a few questions. You're not a Chicota neophyte, are you? Answer me. Where's your tongue? Who are you? Where do you live? Who's Maya Nahim? What are you doing here? Why did you shoot Robert English? Keep it up, Captain. You're beginning to get under his skin. Are you married? Let me see your hand. Yeah, no ring. Are you an Indian? <gasps> ah, now you got us started. Are you really a murderous Tula? Answer me. Are you a killer? Why do you kill? They hang killers. Don't you know that? Do you want to hang? Rope around your pretty neck? Drop through a trap? <sighs> you want to die that way? Then why did you kill Robert English? Did he ever hurt you? No, of course not. That's Robert's father there. Look at him. Look at him. There. Think of the sorrow you've brought him. Killed his son, broke his heart, ruined his life, endangered the life of his daughter. <laughs> why don't you talk? Why don't you speak? What have you done with Judith? You should die. You deserve to die. I came down here to kill you. I swore an oath I'd kill you the night you killed Robert English back in San Francisco. Oh, stop it, Captain. I can't stand anymore. Leave her alone. Very well, Doctor. If you're rested, let's move along. Do you mind, Captain? I... I need a few minutes more. Say, Doctor... I was just thinking about what you said down in that chamber under the stairs yonder. About another pawn being taken from Maya Nahib's side of the chessboard. What do you mean, Skip? Well, I was just thinking of all that's happened since the night Robert was killed. Think of the trail of death we've left in our wake. I don't like to think. First there was Robert. Then the priest aboard ship who jumped into the ocean. And then Mendoza, our guide in La Jolla. And that priest, Ixlan. And the guide thrown to the flesh-eaten tree. Then all the monks in the monastery. And now... The master. Yeah, it looks like Maya Nahib's had the best of it so far, don't it? Yes, I'm afraid he has. That's not all. The worst is still to come. Hmm? Remember, only two more days now until he's to strike his blow at civilization. Oh, yeah, I'd almost forgotten. Only two more days. Two days more. Do you suppose we're going to be able to do anything? Anything to stop him? We've made a sad mess of everything so far. I was depending on the map of the secret passage to give us quick entrance to the sacred city. 
I thought we'd strike a quick blow, capture or kill Mayanaib, and stop this terrible destruction. But I failed. Failed miserably. Yeah, but we've still got a chance. Why, what do you mean, Skip? Oh, don't you see? If we can make Tula talk, she's an important priestess. If we can make her talk, maybe she'll give us a clue to the entrance to the sacred city. That's right. I say, Captain Friday. There'll be no forcing Tula to talk. But, Cappy, it may mean saving Judith's life. Our lives. The lives of hundreds of millions of people. You heard me. We're not going to stoop to their methods of torture. Oh. You ain't falling for this babe, are you, Cappy? That's enough of that, Skip. Come, 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 boys. I'm ready to go on. Let's be on our way. Get the cell door, Skip. And keep your voices down when we get on the stairway. Get up, Tula. Come on. Hey, look, Cappy, you've got to realize that hundreds of millions of lives are worth more than this Shut murderous... Shut up. Be quiet, Skip. Well, let me tell you two something. Judith's more important to me Will than this... Will you pipe down and give me a chance to think? Kip, come up here with me. Yes, you go ahead with the doctor. I'll bring up the rear. The closer we get to the top, the more chance of running into agents of the Brotherhood. I can't argue with you and watch the girl, too. Well, just be careful you don't lose her. I'll take care of that. Come, come. There's no need of quarreling. Come along, Skip. All right. Tula, listen to me. When I loosen this strap on your hands, slip out your arms and run down the stairway. Do you hear me? You coming, Captain? Yes, of course. Never mind why I'm doing this. I ought to kill you. Are your hands free? Then run. Run! Doctor, Skip! Huh? Huh? She got away! Tula got away! Oh, don't go on, you balls! Quick, where'd she go? Let's get after her. No, it's no use. She went like lightning. Was out of sight before I knew what had happened. Oh, there goes our only chance to... Hey, let me see that strap that was around her hands. What for? You let me see that strap. Now, now, Skip. I'll bet he turned her loose. Oh, go ahead and look at it. Does it tell you anything? No. Our only chance to save Judith, and now it's gone. <laughs> Captain Friday has committed one of the most surprising acts of his whole career. Just now, he with Skip and Dr. English caught the green-eyed murderous Tula as they were climbing the stairway to the sun in the heart of the hollow mountain. Then, when Skip and Dr. English's backs were turned, he let her escape. Let Tula escape. The girl who might have led them into the sacred city of the enemy. The girl who might have told them where to find Judah. And now the three men are climbing higher and higher inside the cone of the mountain on the broad golden stairway. Here, Doctor, Skip. Notice anything? Oh, nothing except how my legs ache. Mm. Oh, man, I never want to see another stairway as long as I live. Well, I, I can't go much farther. We're not near the top now. That's what I mean. I think we are near the end of our climb. Huh? Smell the air. Hey, that's fresh air. Exactly. That musty smell's gone. There must be an opening into the sacred city very near. Well, come on, then. Let's go. Oh, I ain't seen daylight for two days. Take it easy, Skip. We'd want to run into a nest of Maya Nahib's agents. The fact that they haven't had the stairway to the sun guarded can mean only one thing. What's that? That the entrance into the sacred city is well protected. Surely by this time they must know that we're out of the dungeon and wandering somewhere in the underground passage. Oh, of course. They know we can't get out. They've got the monastery in their hands, so we can't go back. All they have to do is wait and grab us when we near the top of the stairway. Exactly. So undoubtedly, there'll be a big guard at the end of the passage. And we'll go carefully from now on. Don't talk above a whisper. Keep your gun handy, Skip. Mm -hmm. Here, Doctor, you take this knife I took from Tula. Uh -huh. Use it in an emergency. Come on. Hey, what's that? Quiet. <sighs> Sounds like an airplane. Yeah, that's it. Airplane's still gathering at the sacred city. That shows just how close we are to the entrance. Yeah, no noise now. Dead. Voices. On your toes now. Don't make a sound. See anything? No. Turn off your flashlight. Come on. Follow me closely. Hello? What is it, Captain? The stairway turns a corner here. Oh. And ends. Ends? Yeah. I looked around the corner. There's a passage of about 20 feet. Yeah, let me look. Hey, Cappy, I can see daylight. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. 
But did you see those guards? Guards? How many, Captain? Oh, half a dozen, I should judge. At the end of the passage, there seems to be a big open-air room, sort of a stone balcony. Do you check with that, Skip? Yeah, it looks like it, all right. Anyway, the passage is clear. Are we gonna try it? What do you say, Doctor? Of course. We can't stay here. All right. I'll go ahead. If you like. Then come on. Be ready for a fight. And make it a good one. Here, Doctor, you take the revolver and give me the knife. I'm in just the mood to stick it in one of them fellas. But Skip... Go ahead, Doctor. Young fella like me can swing a knife better than you. Right. And you know how to make a gun talk. Quiet back there. Not another sound. Keep next to the wall. We'll get as near the doorway as we can. Then wait for a signal from me. If it's clear, we'll rush him. Quiet now. They haven't heard us. Keep back into the shadow until I get the lay of the land. Yeah. There are eight of them. Big huskies, armed to the teeth. It's a huge stone balcony they're on. It's hanging on the side of a sheer cliff. Man, look at that. I suppose the losers get thrown over the rail, huh? I'll be sure you're not a loser, then. Are you gonna jump them? What do you say, Doctor? We've got to get into the sacred city. There's no time to lose. All right. Here we go, then. Get your weapons ready. Hey, Captain. Captain, look. Skip, it's Tula again. Well, that ought to show you where she stands. Is there any doubt in your mind now that she's an enemy? Say, she must be of a good deal of importance. Look how the guards back away to keep a respectful distance. They're only slaves, Captain. They're under the strict rule of Maya Naive's priests. Hey, look. She's pointing to the entrance. Do you suppose she spotted us? Drop back, quick. Back away from the entrance. We won't have a chance if we don't get him by surprise. Hey, look. One of the guards is coming into the passage. Tula sent him. Tula? Then she knows we're here. Quiet now. If he comes this far, I'll tap him on the head with the butt of my revolver. Here he comes. Shh. You got him. Shall we tie him up? No bother. He'll be good for a couple of hours. Look. Tula sent another guard in here. What do you suppose it means? I don't know, except that he's got to go the way of his brother. Get ready to grab him in case I should miss. Whatever you do, don't let him holler. Ah, here he comes. Ah. Yeah, better tie and gag him. He didn't get a very hard crack. Might be able to wake up. Yeah, here, give me a hand, Doctor. Help me lay him against the wall here. Hey, what's Tula doing now, Captain? Hey, she's talking to a third guard and pointing in this direction. She seems to be very angry. This is the doggonest thing I ever saw. Yeah. They don't seem the least bit afraid to come into the passageway. They haven't grasped the significance of what's happening yet. But you'd think Tula would catch on. As a matter of fact, I think she has. Oh, man, look at the size of this one. Hmm. Hey, give him a good clear pause so we'll have a job on our hands. Quiet. He's taking his sandals off. He's going to sneak up on us. Oh. Oh. Hit him again, Cappy, quick. Oh. Oh. That finished him. Here, give me a hand, Doctor. We'll file him away for future reference. I'm afraid that noise has queered our little game. Why did they hear it? Well, how could they help it? They're all on their feet, staring at the mouth of the passage. Yeah, but Tula don't seem to be the least bit disturbed. Look, she's trying to calm them. I wish I could hear what she's saying. Hey, look, she's sending two men in this time. Oh, fine. They got their revolvers drawn. And yeah. they've got torches. Yeah, now we're in for it. Doctor, when they get so close, their torches will reveal us. Pot them. Right. Let them have it in their shooting arm. Uh -huh. There are only three left outside. We'll go for them next. Right, Captain. You give the word. Let them have it. Yep. They're both down. Yeah, tie them up, Doctor. Come on, Skip. We'll get the other three. Right with you. I got a gun, too, now. Hey, look at them. Look. What are they doing? Stop them. Stop them. Well, they're going to jump. They're going over the railing. But where's Tula? Where's Tula? They disappeared. But, but, Captain, did you ever see such tremendous heights? Look, we're on a balcony a good half mile above the floor of the valley, on the side of a sheer cliff. Did you see Tula disappear, Skip? Answer me, did you? Did you see her jump? No, of course not, boss. Tula didn't jump. I tell you, she vanished when the trouble started. Hey, look, there's a door over yonder. She must have got away through that. Yeah, so there is. I didn't see that. <clears throat> yeah, it's locked on the inside. Oh, got away again, huh? Well, she did us a good turn that time. Captain. Hmm? Skip. One of the guards escaped. Well, what's wrong, Doctor? What's the matter? One of them escaped. One of the wounded men, he leaped to his feet and ran for the stairway. Got away, huh? That's bad. Yeah, but he fell on the stairs, and the last I heard, he was still rolling. I don't think he'll bother us anymore. Well, the three out on the balcony leaped over the moment they saw us. They must have fallen a good half mile to the floor of the valley. I believe they'd all jump off the balcony if we'd give them a chance. I've tied up the ones in the passageway. I don't think we'll have any trouble from that quarter. What about Tula? Yeah, Tula may be carrying the news of our arrival to Maya Nahi. Oh, but... that would be fatal. We've got to keep our presence a secret if we hope to have any success. Look here, Doctor. I've got an idea that Tula isn't going to give us away. Why, what do you mean, Captain? I... Why? 
Joe Boyce. Hmm? What a wonderful bit of architecture. Look at this balcony, hooked on the side of this cliff like an eagle's nest. Look. Look, the fog's rising out of the valley. Hey, the sacred city. Look, Doctor, isn't that a temple coming up out of the mist? Beautiful. Beautiful. The sacred city of the Brotherhood of the Living Dead. A golden temple on the edge of a blue lake. Look, on the other side of the lake, there's another temple. It's white as milk in the sun. Yes, that's the temple of the moon goddess. Look, a truly feminine building. Just as the rugged, virile lines and spires of the golden temple designate it as masculine. Oh, it's marvelous. The one is dedicated to the sun god, the other to the moon goddess. What? Well, well, there's a big city below us. Look, now that the fog's cleared away. Yes. See? The temples divided by the tiny blue lake are in the exact center of the city. Thousands and thousands of Chakotas live in that city. Yeah, but what do they do out here away from civilization? They're sufficient under themselves. They've but one purpose in life, to protect the secrets of the ancient Chakotas. They're trained from infancy to become small stones in the barrier reared by the Chakota priests against the advancement of civilization. Uh, we can't stand here like this. We're wasting time. Uh, it looks as though we'd have a difficult time getting down. I don't see any path. Oh, there's a path, all right. It begins behind that silly-looking idol over at the other end of the balcony. It'll take a mountain goat to follow it, though. In heaven's name, Captain. Hey, look here, Cappy. You don't mean we've got to travel that path. Why, well, it's not more than a foot wide and cut right into the face of the cliff. I know it, but that's the path. You reckon Tula escaped that way? Yeah, I think she did. Then we'll probably be met by a young Chakota army as we descend. She's had time enough to warn the whole country. I don't think Tula's going to give us away. I started to tell you before. I, um... I've got a confession to make. A uh, confession? I did turn Tula free back there on the stairway, just as you and Skip suspected I did. Uh -huh. I see. You deliberately turned her loose. That's right. But look here, Captain. Why? I can't tell you right now. Let's say uh, it was uh, it was an impulse. Never mind, Captain. I think I understand. Yeah, well, I don't. He turned that girl loose when we might have made her tell us where Judith is. It'll be a long time before I forget this. Just a moment, Skip. Captain, is that the reason you think this Tula girl won't give us away in the sacred city? Just an impulse? Yeah, something more than that. I think Tula knew we were in the passageway back there all the while, while she was sending those guards into us one at a time. I think she did it deliberately to clear the balcony for us. That's absurd. And you may be right, but I'd swear she did. But why? Why should she? Because I released her. Oh, this thing's getting beyond me. I'm all mixed up. Who is on which side? Mrs. Santos turns traitor. She says she's not, but everything she does indicates she is. Were the monks at the monastery friends or enemies? Were they murdered by the Brotherhood or are they laughing up their sleeves at us? Carlos turned traitor and got thrown to the tree that eats flesh for his troubles. Captain Friday goes back on us by turning Tula the murderers free. Oh, first thing we know, we'll be on our knees in front of Maya Nahi. Skip, don't call Tula murderous again. Well, she is. She killed Robert. Don't say that again. Captain Skip, come. We've got to take this dangerous way down. Let's get it over with. Oh, okay, but I'm still burning. Come, Captain, this is no time for quarreling. We've got work to do. Very well, I'll lead. You will please do nothing of the kind, uh, Captain Friday. Hey, Mrs. Santos. Where did you come from? From the other side of the door you found locked, Captain. You were there all the while? I was. Mrs. Santos, put up that revolver. You are going to do what I tell you. Now what? You three men are going into that room out of which I just came. No, we're not. We're going down into the sacred city. You are not. You are my prisoners. Mrs. Santos, tell me, where's Judith? At least tell me that. Is she all right? Get into that room, all of you. Put your hands in the air, Captain Friday. Now get into that room. Mrs. Santos, please tell me about Judith. Is she safe? Dr. English, go into that room. Mrs. Santos, I'll give anything, anything for Judith's return. Save her and I'll... I'll even give you the map you want. The map of the secret passage. You are not carrying it with you, are you? No, but... <laughs> the map. Dr. English, I do not want your precious map. I know now more than that map could ever tell me. So Mrs. Santos knows more than even the precious map revealed. 
What does that promise for Captain Friday, Skip, and Dr. English? And is Judith lost to the outside world forever, swallowed up in the maze of the sacred city? Listen next week at the same hour for Chapter 8 of The Land of the Living Dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. Adventures by Morse. Cartony e. Morse presents The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, Come with me. Mrs. Santos had struck another blow against the Dr. English expedition. Captain Friday, Skip Turner, and Dr. English had struggled up the two miles of underground stairway to the sun in the hope of reaching the sacred city and saving the doctor's daughter, Judith, before she fell into the hands of Maya Nayib, high priest of the Brotherhood of the Living Dead. On their way up the stairs, they captured Tula, the green-eyed priestess known as Robert English's murderer. Captain Friday, without giving any reason to skip or the doctor, let her escape. Yes, I did do that. But almost immediately after, Oliver, she helped the three over of us overcome the Chicota Indian guards at the head of the stairway, giving us free access to the sacred city. As we were on the point of descending from the high cliff into the city, Mrs. Santos appeared on the scene. Armed with a revolver, she ordered us into a big stone chamber at the head of the stairway. Dr. English broke down and offered Mrs. Santos his precious map, which led to the secret passage in the legendary room full of Chicota gold, if she would return his daughter Judith safely from the sacred city. And then came an unexpected blow. Mrs. Santos announced that she didn't want the map, that she now knew more than the map could possibly tell her. Dr. English. Go into that chamber, quickly. Just a minute, Mrs. Santos. Not another word, Captain Friday, or I shoot. Do as I say. There. That is right. There. I have you where I want you now. Yeah, but what's the big idea of locking yourself in here with us? Mrs. Santos, what's to prevent us from taking that gun from you? You will not do that, Captain Friday. You are going to listen to me. But Judith, Mrs. Santos, what of my daughter? Where is she? Has she fallen into the hands of Maya Naib? Senorita English will come later. Just now, there are more important matters. Nothing's more important than Than all the rest of us, Senor Turner. The girl is more important than the whole of the civilized world. Is that what you mean? I didn't say that. But she's my... Senores, it is time we had a showdown. I've been thinking that for a long time, Mrs. Santos. So far, I have received nothing but discourtesy... Suspicion and inconsideration from you. Are you still pretending to be a friend? If I am not still your friend, it is you who have cast me out. Believe me, Capitan, I have been working toward the end which I told you of back in San Francisco on the night that Dr. English's son was killed. You're working against Maya Nahib? I have been doing so with my heart and soul. Then why are you holding us prisoners in this stone chamber? After tonight, there'll be but two days left before Maya Naib strikes to wipe out all civilization. Yeah, why don't you let us go down into the secret city and at least try to kill a monster that calls himself a high priest? Because such a move would be more than useless. You would all be captured or killed before you even approach the Temple of the Sun, where Maya Naib resides. But even that would be better than dying in this raffle. And that is exactly what is going to happen to all of you unless you listen to me. Well, go ahead. In the first place, I want your confidence. I want you to trust in me. <laughs> you can't win confidence at the point of a pistol. No, I do not expect that. That's very good of you. Dr. English, do you remember when we all stood together in that dark cell under the monastery and saw the werewolf and his men with Judith a captive in their midst? Yes, Mrs. Santos, I remember. 
Dr. English, do you remember what you said to me then? Uh, yes. Repeat it. I said that if you'd saved Judith from those Jakota priests, I'd never doubt you again. That my faith in you'd be complete. Good. And Captain Friday, what was it you said? Well, I said the same, but you didn't say... Just Judith. a moment, Captain. And did you not say the same, Senor Turner? Sure did. And do you still mean it? Yes. Yes, of course. What about you, Skip? Listen, you saved Judith and nothing else matters. And that goes for me too, Mr. Santos. Very well. Dr. English, see that door over there? Yes. Here is the key to it. Unlock it. Judith! Judith! Oh, my dear, it's really you. It's really you. Judith! Hey, look, it's really Judith! How are you, Mrs. Santos, did you save Judith from Maya Nahim? See, si, Captain Friday. Well, and it looks like I owe you an apology. Why have you been so rabid against me? Why have you doubted me as you have? Well, it began back in La Jolla, when you bent over that dying Chicota priest, Ixcon, after he'd stabbed himself. See? Si. I heard him whisper to you, you must strike at once if you would save Tula. Well? After that, everything you did had a mysterious side to it. First you disappeared with Judith. Then you saved us from the werewolf by some, some secret signal. You were in the sacrificial chamber when they had Dr. English stretched on the stone. We caught you coming out of a conference with a werewolf and a master of the sacred city. See, si, see, si, I understand that. On the other hand, Capitan Friday, did you stop to figure how many times I have saved your lives since we met? How many of my mysterious acts, as you call them, were performed to save you? Yeah, that's true, Mrs. Santos. I suppose my whole theory of suspicion was based on the words whispered to you by that Chicota priest. Strike it once if you would save Tula. Ah, see. Si. Yeah, I was pretty bitter over Robert English's death, and I had my doubts about anyone connected with Tula, the girl who killed him. Captain Friday, I am going to tell you something that no one in the world except Maya Nahib, the masters of the sacred city, and I know. No? Yeah. Something that will sound like an Arabian Nights tale. Something about Tula. About Tula? See, si, about Tula. It explains the meaning of the priest's words. Oh, Judith, but it's good to see you alive and safe and happy. But Judith, tell us what happened to you. Well, the werewolf made two huge Dakota Indians carry me down through a long passageway. This was right after I was captured in the monastery. And the passage seemed to lead around under the stairway to the sun. Yes, yes, we saw you go. It was when they entered that passageway we sent Mrs. Santos out to save you. Yes, I saw her. They captured her, too. Well, they put me in a chamber under the stairway right near the torture chamber and locked me up. Yeah, we tried to follow you. I was horribly frightened. I waited and waited. And then suddenly, the door was unlocked and a huge priest entered. He, he didn't look like the rest of the Chakota Indians I'd seen. He looked awfully intelligent, like, like a scholar. One of the masters? That's what he called himself. He, he said he was going to take my mind away from me and give it to an Indian girl in the sacred city. Judith. Then it was true. But what do you mean? After you disappeared, we met a weird creature down at the foot of the stairway who told us that your soul was to be taken from you. Yes. Yes, it was true. He took me into sort of a vault and showed me some Spaniards whose souls had been taken from them. They were laying out in a row on stone beds. They, they looked as though they were just sleeping. Spaniards? Yes. He said that they had been like that for 400 years, that they were some of Cortez's men. Judith, where was this fault? I must see these men. The room is just beyond the torture chamber. Skip, I'd give anything in the world to be able to take those bodies back to civilization oh, with us. Father, how can you? It makes me ill to just think of it. And then what happened to you, Judith? Then the master led me back into the first chamber and made me sit down and look into his eyes. Look into his eyes? I tried to resist him. I fought his mind with every bit of me, but I, I couldn't. I felt myself slipping, slipping. I, I was losing consciousness. Then suddenly I, I grew horribly dizzy and everything went black. And that's the last you remember? The next thing I knew, I was being violently shaken. It was Mrs. Saddles? Yes. When I opened my eyes, Mrs. Santos was bending over me, shaking me and calling my name. She gave me something to drink, and in a moment I, I felt better. 
Then she took me from that awful room and brought me up the stairway to the sun to this chamber. Well, then, you don't know what became of the master? No. Well, we found his body behind a stone bench in a room. Mrs. Santos had stabbed him to death. <gasps> Mrs. Santos? That is not so. I did not kill the master, Senor Turner. Oh, Mrs. Santos, I, I didn't know you was listening. I thought you were still in the other room with Captain Friday. It does not matter. Then who did kill the master? We found the sacrificial knife, which I gave you back in San Francisco, buried in his back. See, si, I know Dr. English. Do you remember telling me, Doctor, that this knife would be of assistance to us down here in the La Jolla jungle? Yes. Well, it was. The werewolf killed the master. The werewolf? See, si. the werewolf hated the master because he was superior to himself. He wanted revenge because the master scorned him, called him a dog, taunted him with being a beast in human form. And you took advantage of that? See, si, Captain Friday. The master ordered the werewolf to take me to the torture chamber, while he himself went to talk with Senorita English. As we went down the stairway, I told the werewolf of the sacred Chicota sacrificial knife which I possess. I told him how he might use it to even matters with the master. You're a courageous woman, Mrs. Santos. Then I showed him the knife and offered to give it to him. If he would free me and help me to save Senorita English, it worked like magic. But I don't understand. If he wanted the knife, why didn't he simply take it from you? There is a Chicota belief that to steal a sacred knife is to court everlasting punishment. Even the werewolf dared not take it from me. But he could receive it as a gift. And so he turned Judas and knifed his own master in the back. And saved the life of the senorita. But what's become of the werewolf, Mrs. Santos? Is he in the sacred city? Do you suppose anyone who had slain a master would dare enter the sacred city? No. He is most likely even now fleeing for his life. You don't have much sympathy for him. And why should I? He wanted his revenge. I gave it to him. Dr. English, I despise a betrayer, even though I did have to employ him. He probably deserved whatever fate held for him. Come, senores, now that we once more understand each other, there is much to be done. Yes, yes, doctor, Mrs. Santos has discovered the underground passage to the Chicota treasure room. To the treasure room? You found the passage shown on my map? See, si. and the passage in which the treasure is hidden does not connect with the old monastery at all. It leads from the sacred city to a subterranean riverbed to the other side of that huge peak which is called the Finger of God. And you found it? See, si, I have even explored it. Hey, did you find a Chakota's room full of gold? I had other things to do besides hunt treasure, Senor Turner. There is the civilization of the world to be saved. Oh, yeah. But how are we to reach the underground passage? First, we must pass through the sacred city itself. And just how do we do that? This room we are in is the uppermost in a series which drop down tier after tier through this cliff. In regular cliff-dweller fashion? See, si. By steps or ladders, we may descend from room to room until we reach the level of the valley in which the sacred city stands. Mrs. Santos, do you know what you're leading us into? Have you plans after we reach the sacred city? Doctor, I have plans that are so tremendous I dare not even whisper them here. Come, when we have passed through the sacred city and reach the safety of the underground passage, I will tell you. We'll have to be lucky to ever get through the sacred city. Before we take a step toward the sacred city, you are to put on these robes I have secured for you. Robe? See, si. They are the robes from the guards whom Tula helped you to overcome on the balcony. Then Tula did knowingly assist us. See, si, but enough of that. Now put on the robes. I have stained here to darken your faces. Ah, disguises, huh? You will need it. A white man could not hope to walk the streets of the sacred city. Here, Senorita English, this is for you. And I would wear this one. Remember, you are not to utter a word. It would mean death. But if we are approached... Then let me do the talking. I speak the Chicota tongue. Good. There. Senorita English, you will pass. The stain is a little dark, but it will do. Now we are ready. And remember, we cannot reach the underground passage until we have safely passed through the sacred city. You must place yourselves in my hands. Come. Yeah, man, let's up and at him. Led by Mrs. Santos, the Dr. English party is on its secret and dangerous passage down through the tiers of rooms leading to the sacred city of the living dead. 
Their faces are stained. They are wearing the garb of the Chicota Indians. To be found now means death, such as these ancient people alone know how to meet out. Are we almost there? One more set of steps, and one more room to pass through, and we will be on the floor of the valley at the entrance to the city. Oh, I, I guess I'm about all in. I wish we could have a light. Better to travel in darkness. Senorita English, it will soon be over now. Oh. Hey, Judith, what's the matter? Oh, something, something cold touched me. Cold? Yes, it, it was a hand. Are you sure? Yes, it, it's right in front of me. It's right in front of Cut me. Cut the they turn on your light. Yeah. Hey. Oh. A man hanging from the ceiling. It touched me. It touched me. Be quiet, senorita. Turn off that light, Capitan. Right. Oh. Come, we must get out of this room at once. But see here, Mrs. Sam. Be Santa. quiet. Follow close to me. There. Now we are safe. Turn on that light again, please. But, but who was it? Did none of you recognize him? Yes, yes, I saw. It was the werewolf. <gasps> Will. Are you sure? See, si. it was the werewolf. And the fellow's already paid for killing the master. See, si, he has paid, but not at the hands of Maya Nahib. Then who? Could you not see? Everything pointed to it. What the heck are you talking about, Miss Saddles? Senor Turner, the werewolf hanged himself. Hanged it? But why? Why should he? Why did Judas hang himself? Why does any traitor hang himself? Remorse. Fear. Self-hate. That is why. Oh, uh, I feel sick. Get hold of yourself, senorita. Look, do you know what is on the other side of that door? What is it, Mrs. Sanders? The sacred city. We are about to enter the sacred city. Hey, here we go. The sacred city. Not another word. Remember, do not speak a word. Heed my one last warning, or we will never reach the underground passage. Keep your eyes open. See everything. Say nothing. We are going to cross the sacred city, and there will be much to see. You three men especially. Watch for the lake of molten lava. Lake of lava? Examine it with care, but do not pause. Watch depends on what you see. Watch the lake of boiling lava. <laughs> Wonderful. You are the first white people but one to have passed safely through the sacred city. And this is the underground passage to the Chakota treasure chamber. It is the underground passage. It's beyond my wildest dream, Mrs. Santos. Marvelous. Those inscriptions. See, see, of course, Dr. English. It is a natural cavern cut through the rock by some ancient river and worn smooth by its waters. After the waters were stopped, the ancient Chicotas came here to carve the history of the world upon the walls. But how on earth did its whereabouts become lost to the Chicota masters? Only history could tell us that, Capitan Friday. Such things do happen sometimes. And the treasure of the Chicotas is hidden somewhere in here? See, si, somewhere in here. But tell me, did you all examine the lake of lava in the sacred city as we passed? I certainly did. What a nasty place. It must be 200 feet from the surface of the ground down to that boiling lava. How far is the crater across? A quarter of a mile. The whole valley in which the sacred city is situated was many centuries ago a seething mass of white hot liquid rock like that. What an amazing phenomenon. See, and my friends, it is even more amazing. The thing I propose to do. Well, please explain, Mr. Santos. Senores, Maya Nahib was speaking the truth when he said that he intended destroying the civilization of the world. He means it. And what is more, he has the power with which to do it. You know he has the power? Si, Capitan, I know. And we have only two more days in which to stop him. Yeah, but you said you had a plan. Si, a most terrible plan. A plan that will cost thousands of people their lives. That bad, huh? It means sacrificing thousands to save millions. To save the whole world from destruction. And horrible as it may seem... Certainly, it's justified. I would gladly sacrifice my life to prevent the crime which Maya Nahib is about to commit. Well, Mrs. Santos, what is your plan? When we entered the underground passage, did you notice that the entrance is on the hillside, pointing directly down on the lava lake? That's right. And the other entrance to the passage is high on the side of that highest of all peaks I once pointed out to you. 
known as the finger of God. Yeah, I remember. You said it was so tall that it caused storms in its vicinity every day. See, si. and it was from that conversation that I got my clue to the underground passage. When I spoke of these storms and lightning, if you remember, Senorita English looked startled, and Dr. English was highly annoyed. I suspected something. And so I went up on the slopes of the finger of God and stumbled on some ancient ruins. And in those ruins, I found the outer entrance to the underground passage. It was the same symbol which brought you to the secret passage in the monastery. Oh, that's good work, Mrs. Sanders. Remarkable. I never thought of it. And these ruins are on the edge of a tremendous lake. A lake on the side of the mountain? See, si. A lake at least a mile across, and it looks to be exceedingly deep. But I don't see what this has to do with Just the... Just a moment, Dr. English. What do you suppose would happen were that gray lake suddenly to descend into that pit of boiling lava? In heaven's name, Mrs. Santos. Exactly. There would suddenly be a gaseous condition formed in the bowels of the earth that would blow the sacred city into eternity. The sacred city? Why, it had rocked the whole state of La Jolla. It had have an effect on the surface of both continents. It would wipe out my Anahib, Dr. English. It would wipe us all out. That is my plan. I am willing to sacrifice my life. Are the rest of you willing? Yeah, but I don't get it. How are you going to get the water of the lake into the lava bed? It is too easy. Even now, there is but 30 feet of sandstone between the lake and the entrance to the underground passage. A little well-placed dynamite would send the whole lake rushing down through this underground passage and into the boiling lava. Holy Moses. Yeah, it's too big for me. I, I can't grasp it. I've got to think it over. But does it mean that we'll all be blown up? It may mean that, senorita. That is the chance we will have to take. But, Mrs. Sanders, there is another way. Not demand too much on that, Captain Friday. It may be a way. But you told me that. I have little faith in anything where my Anahib is concerned, Captain Friday. Oh, I see. No. If you go into this, you must do so with your eyes open, knowing that it may be your last act upon Earth. If I only had myself to consider. That's exactly how I feel about it, Doctor. You, you... Oh, I know. You're both holding back because of me. No, no. I won't wouldn't. have it. Oh, look, Judith. I won't. But... If the rest of you are willing to take a chance, so am I. But, Judith, I won't honey... listen. I vote for Mrs. Santos' plan. Good for you, Judith. Dr. English, your daughter has chosen. Judith, are you sure? Father, that... I won't have you afraid for me. Very well. Mrs. Santos, Judith and I agree on your plan. And you, Senor Turner? Yeah, of course. Well, it's settled. Now then, when does the celebration come off? The whole city will be asleep by 10 o'clock. The best time will be tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Then this is the night before Maya Nahib's big show. Hey, look here. I just thought of something. Well? Where are we going to get the dynamite? Senor Turner, the dynamite is at this moment hidden in the passage. I have seen to that. I have a friend in the sacred city. Mrs. Santos, you mean Captain that... Friday, of that we do not speak. Well, then there's nothing to do but wait. Nothing to do tonight and all day tomorrow but wait. Oh, if, if we could only do it now and get it over with. I, I feel like a condemned person. If you like, Senorita English, I can put your mind at ease, put you to sleep so that you will not even dream bad dreams. Oh, no, no. When you say that, all I can think of is that horrible master who tried to take my mind. There, there. I should not have mentioned it. Say, I've got an idea. Yeah? What? Let's look for the Jakota's treasure chamber while we're waiting. Oh, Captain, do you suppose we could? Father's told me about the fabulous jewels and treasure of the Chicotas. Of course we can. Come on. Come on, snap out of it, Skip. Come on, Doctor. A splendid idea, Capitan. It would take our minds off what is about to happen. Here, each of you take a flashlight. Everyone will set out to look for himself. The one who finds the room full of gold and jewels wins the prize. Oh, and what will the prize be, Captain? <laughs> well, we'll let Skip figure out the prize. <laughs> All right. Well, why not give the finder his choice of the room full of jewels? It... Oh, I forgot. Jewels won't do us much good after tomorrow night. Skip. Ah, that was a dumb remark. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, Judith. You and I'll go together. No, I, I, I guess I won't go after all. That last remark sort of took the pep out of me. Oh, please forget it, honey. Come on, give me the chance to deck you out in all the jewels in the world. <laughs> well, all right. I'll come. <laughs> Who's that? Is that you, Captain Friday? Oh, Mrs. Santos. How fortunate. The rest are scattered off someplace. 
I've been wanting to talk to you. I thought we had come to an understanding. But if you only knew how much I Capitan admire... Friday, I ask you not to say any more. Oh, I suppose you're right. I told I... you how I felt about the matter. What more can I do? I know. Put the matter out of your mind. You're only making yourself miserable by thinking about it. You can hold out no hope, then? It seems strange, does it not, Capitan? That only a few hours ago you were condemning me bitterly as a faithless friend. Now you talk to me about affection? I ask you again. Can you give me no hope? No more than I have given you. If this terrible project comes off as we have planned, and if we escape... Oh, what is the use of talking anymore about it until this horrible strain is past? Mrs. Santos, you're a brave woman. I admire you with my whole heart. And if somehow we are saved, I... Yeah, no, there, I, I won't mention the matter again. Shall we join in the search for the treasure? If you like. It does not seem to matter hey, much to... Do the down the road! Skip, don't act like a madman. Are you certain? Yeah, yeah, come on, I'll show you. I left her there. Come on, come on. Well, where's Dr. English? Uh, doctor! Hi, Doctor! Yes, Captain, here I am. Come here, Doctor. Judas found the treasure. It wasn't hidden at all. Just a little door off the passageway. Oh, there you are, Doctor. Why, what's happened? Judith found the Chicota's room full of treasure. Where? Where? Come out of here, Jonda. See, there's Judith's flashlight waving to us. Come on. Wait. There's something the matter. Look how that flashlight waves. Come on, Judith's in trouble. <laughs> For the moment, the plan for the destruction of the sacred city and Maya Nahib, its high priest, were forgotten in the excitement of finding the fabulous treasure. But with the cry of desperation from Judith, all the horror and fear of these last hours have returned to the party. Next week, at this same hour, you will hear the tenth and final episode of The Land of the Living Dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. This episode begins in a moment. Hopefully. There we go. <laughs> Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. Dr. English's entire party has been once more united, this time in the famous secret passage, safe for the moment, from Mayan Nahib, high priest of the sacred city of the priests of the living dead. With them is Mrs. Roberto Santos, who by her acts of saving Judah from the werewolf and smuggling the entire party through the sacred city, has proved herself finally to be a staunch, although somewhat mysterious, ally. The party has found a way of ending the menace of Mayan Nahib. At the upper end of the secret passage is a great mountain lake, separated from the mouth of the passage only by a few yards of sandstone. In the heart of the sacred city, and almost directly beneath the lower end of the secret passage, is a great lake of boiling lava, the living remains of a once great volcano. By releasing the water of the mountain lake into the secret passage and down into this crater of white-hot lava, the English party know that gas and steam will be formed in the bowels of the earth sufficient to blow the sacred city into eternity. 
that right, Captain Friday? Yes, but this means that our own lives will be endangered also. However, there seems to be no other way. If we don't destroy Maya Nahib and his agents within 12 hours, the high priest will destroy the civilization of the world. There's no choice. And so Judith, Mrs. Santos, Dr. English, Skip Turner, and I have determined on this personal sacrifice. We have set the hour for the great catastrophe for 10 o'clock of the night before Maya Nahib is to strike against civilization. While waiting for the hour, we set out to hunt through the secret passage in search of the magnificent treasure room of the Chakota Ancients, which we know is hidden somewhere in the passage. Judith and Skip found the room. Skip left Judith on guard and rushed back to get the rest of us when we suddenly heard Judith scream. We dashed back to where he left Judith. She's dead. Judith's dead, and it's all my fault. Oh, Dr. English, it's all my fault. Pinned to the wall with spears. I shouldn't have left her. I shouldn't have left her. The Chakotas have killed her. In heaven's name, Captain, help me pull these spears out of the woods. Skip, get hold of yourself. Hmm? Look here. Look, the spears haven't touched her body. They've gone through her coat. Yeah, but look how her head hangs. No, she's just fainted. Dr. English, Judith isn't dead. It's only a faint. What's that? There. Here, loosen the spears while I lift her down. There. Come on. Er, eh. Oh, Judith, what an experience. Yes, look, she's opening her eyes. Judith? Judith, honey. Oh, Father. Father, they're after us. The Chakotas are after us. Yes, right. Someone must have thrown those spears. The Chakotas are guarding the treasure. They'll kill us all. Guarding the treasure? Judith, are the Chakotas in that treasure room? Yes. The spears came at me from all directions when I opened the door. But that is impossible. No one knows about the treasure. It's been lost for 400 years. But it's true. It's true. There are men over there in the shadows. When I stepped inside the room, I... Now, honey, <laughs> just rest your head on my arm. There. Now, tell me what happened. It was awful. I, I stepped into the room and turned my flashlight into the dark. Suddenly, the air was filled with gleaming spears. I, I couldn't see where they came from. They struck the door all around me, and I felt myself pinned to the door. Then... I, I guess I fainted. It's all right now, my dear. There's something doggone funny going on here. If there is someone guarding the treasure, why haven't we been attacked? Our flashlight should have attracted their attention. I think I've found your answer, Doctor. Look there. It was a booby trap. A booby trap? What is it, Captain? Oh, I see. Yeah, see here? Wires along the ceiling and attached to the door. They evidently run out to some sort of spring traps in the back of the room. The moment the door was open, the springs were released, and a dozen spears came flying at the intruder. And there ain't nobody in the room. That's right. And there hasn't been for 400 years. Pretty clever fellows, those old Chicota priests. Oh, Judith, you don't know what a close call you had, honey. What difference does it make, Skip? I'd just as soon die by a spear as be blown to pieces when we blow up the sacred city. Judith, my dear, don't talk like that. Here, here, now. Why talk about death with a hundred million dollars in front of us? Look at this mountain of gold and jewels. And pearls, Judith! Look at these great baskets of pearls. Yeah. Man, oh man, will you look at it? Woo-wee, this is what I call wallowing in wealth. Oh, I, I, I wonder what's in those bales. Big as a bale of hay. Robes, priceless robes of the ancient kings of La Jolla. What a treasure. Speaking of kings, Doctor, look. Throw your flash over here. <gasps> oh. By Jove, Captain. It's beyond comprehension. Those mummies are the ancient kings. Oh, if only Robert could have seen this. And all this treasure belonged to the Chakota priests. Yes, Skip. Most of it was looted from Montezuma's slaves while Cortez was marching down upon his capital. Captain Judith, all of you, come here quickly. What? What is it, Doctor? What have you found? Oh, beautiful. Simply beautiful. Oh, Father. A giant Gila monster. A Gila monster on a yellow disc. Well, that disc must be ten feet across. The monster in the sun. That disc is of solid gold. And the monster across its face is pure jade. Well, Doctor, it must weigh tons. And that was stolen from Montezuma? Yes. And Montezuma must have known of the legend of the monster in the sun. Why, of course, the legend is as old as man. The coming of Cortez was prophesied in just such a manifestation. Come over here, Captain. I want you to see this. Judith. Yes, Skip. Oh, Skip, isn't that beautiful? Why, it's the loveliest ring I ever saw. Where did you get it? Out of this little gold box. Just look at the pearls, big as pigeon eggs. The ring was laying right on top of the pearls. Oh, but it's beautiful. Judith, honey. Yes, Skip. Judith, will you wear this ring for me? Oh, but, Skip, do you think we should take it? Why, of course. All this stuff belongs to us. We found it, didn't we? Miss English, that is your engagement ring. Oh, Skip, you're a dear. <laughs> I love it. 
I just adore them. I can read a few of the hieroglyphics, Captain. Doctor, there's such a stupendous wealth of treasure, I, I can't realize it. Hello. Somebody's wearing a ring. Uh-huh. Isn't it lovely? Oh. Any, uh, any significance? Of course it has. Hasn't it, Skip? You're doggone tootin' it has. Oh, Dr. English, I've asked Judith to marry me. That's as it should be, my son. And, my boy, as a wedding gift, I grant you one-fifth of the treasure of the Chakotas. One-fifth? Make hmm? it one-fourth, Captain Friday. Huh? I will not claim my share. Hey, Miss Santos, where you been? Mr. Santos, you look ill. What's the matter? The city sleeps, Dr. English. We have one hour more in which to complete our task. <gasps> oh, now, Mrs. Santos, is it time? Must we die now? Her senorita English. Look here, Mrs. Santos, I'm going to tell them about it. Captain Friday, you have nothing to tell. But I thought... You have nothing to tell. Come now, the hour is near. There are many things yet to be done. You, you mean we're going to, to just leave this room full of treasure like this? We cannot take it with us, senorita. Oh, but Mrs. Santos, all this wealth and beauty blown to pieces. We're buried under a million tons of earth. Come on, let's get out of this place. We're all getting morbid. Hey, Captain, look here, mm. Dr. English. Poor old fella sitting over yonder by himself. Tears on his face. Yeah, he's already sacrificed his son, Robert. Now it looks like Judith's going to be sacrificed. Yeah, and his own life. I wish we could do something for him, but it's too late now. We're getting it, boss. A little more and we'll have that dynamite, please. Hand me those fuses. <laughs> oh, man, look at them stars overhead. Soft wind blowing. Mm. What a night for the right gal and the right fella. Oh, keep your eyes open. We don't want someone sneaking up on us out here on the edge of the lake. Yeah, I'm watching. I ain't seen a soul. Get out. Get out. Somebody's coming. How many? Couldn't tell. I just saw a shadow moving this way. Listen. Capitan Friday. Ah. Uh. It's you, Mrs. Santos. See, si, it is I. How is the work coming? We have the holes drilled for the dynamite. Get back at it, Skip. Yeah. There. We oh, have just half an hour more, Captain Friday. I know. We're putting the powder in the holes now. It's a delicate job tamping the earth down around those caps. The fuses aren't any too long. We will have to make the best of it. Did you inspect the fuses and caps closely? There must not be any sleep. I have done my best, Mrs. Santos. The entire lake will pour down through the secret passage and into the crater of boiling lava within a few minutes after the explosion. Good. And a half hour after that should come the most stupendous explosion in the history of man. Yeah, there. The last hole is filled and tamped down. I've braided all the fuses together. One match will light the whole works. Still 20 minutes to go. Skip, huh? will you go down to the mouth of the passageway and bring Judith and Dr. English up? Yeah, sure. It'll only take a minute. Mr. Santos, what's happened? Are we going to be let down? Captain Friday, you know as much as I do. It is in the hands of the gods now. I have done everything I can. But shouldn't it be here by now? You're certain you made the place it was to come clear? My instructions were definite. No, Captain. If anything goes wrong now, it will be because my Anahib strength was greater than ours. But why not tell the whole story to the others? It would at least give them some last-minute hope. No. Why raise hopes that may never come to pass? When it does come, will be time enough. But if it doesn't come... If it doesn't come, Mrs. Santos. Then we go to our death with Maya Nahib and his agents. I made it clear that the lake would be blown into eternity at 10 o'clock whether it came or not. Are you going to send Dr. English and Judith and Skip to their deaths without any explanation? They've put their lives in your hands. Oh, here they come now. If you insist, there is still 15 minutes. Please, they'd want it. Very well, then. I will tell them all that they could wish to know. Good. They deserve that much. Well, here they are, Captain. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Santos. How's it going, Captain? Dynamite's all in. Nothing to do but wait now. How, how much time have we, Mrs. Santos? Still 15 minutes, Senorita English. Listen, I have a few things to explain to you before Captain Friday touches off the dynamite. Hmm. A lot of good an explanation is going to do us now. True. Still, I do not know a better way to spend the last 15 minutes of my life. Confession is good for the soul, they say. Get on with it, please, Mr. Santos. In the first place, I want to tell you about Maya Nahib. Dr. English, Maya Nahib is not a Chicota Indian. He's a, not a Chicota? No. Maya Nahib is an Englishman. Mrs. Santos, what are you saying? Are, are you telling us that a civilized white man could kill and ravish and destroy with all the brutality of, of a savage? That I tell you. Maya Nahib is a white man. 
A very devil of a white man. In the last minutes of their existence, before the lake water flows into the pit of boiling lava to blow the sacred city from the face of the earth, Mrs. Santos unfolds a story. The story of Maya Nahi, the evil high priest of the Brothers of the Living Dead. Mrs. Santos has just revealed the startling fact that the great priest is a white man. Maya Nahib is an Englishman. Before the war, you knew Maya Nahib as Sir Cecil Brookfield, Earl of Lexington. Sir Cecil, the famous ethnologist? The same. Mrs. Santos, that's impossible. Sir Cecil was killed in the war. He was not. He disappeared, and it was supposed that he was killed. But that is not true. He was a psychoneurotic case. His madness took the form of hallucinations. He believed himself a reincarnation of one of the ancient Chicota high priests. Oh, that's terrible. As a sane man, he was an inspiration to learned scientists. He was ruthless. Or he might have continued to his death as Maya Nahid, the high priest, say for one thing. And that? With his madness came a terrible obsession against civilization. All civilization, but especially England. Do you remember the message he sent by the werewolf to his agents in the room of the stairway to the sun five days ago? In five days, strike to wipe out civilization. But wipe out London first. It was an obsession. Mr. Santos, how did you happen to be in that room that day with a werewolf and the master? The men in the monastery had captured one of the masters. I took his robe, covered my head and face, and attended the meeting as a spy. Unfortunately, Captain Friday caught me at That was a courageous thing to do, Mrs. Santos. There is no time for praise, Dr. English. We have only eight minutes left. Until these madmen came to the throne of the sacred city, the great mysteries of life which the original line of Chicota masters were preserving had been saved. But Maya Nahi, or Sir Cecil, abused his power. That was fatal. Now I begin to understand many things. See, the change soon became apparent. Mystics all over the world became alarmed for the safety of mankind. They sent their best men to the sacred city to defeat Maya Nahi. They were killed one by one. My husband... Roberto Santos. Your own son, Robert English. These are but two of the many brave men who died trying to curb Sir Cecil's power. And Robert never told me a word. He was under oath to keep silent. I took over my husband's work. And Robert came down here and we joined forces. Then he was killed in San Francisco. And in desperation, I brought all of you into it. I needed friends badly. You were a straw to a drowning person. I grasped you to me. We're grateful you did. And now it looks as though I had led you to your death. We're glad to sacrifice ourselves, Mrs. Santos. We are succeeding where everyone else has failed. Mrs. Santos, only four minutes more. I guess there's no use hoping. Four minutes. Keep your eye on the watch. On the exact second dynamite delay. I'll take care of it. We have four minutes left. Ask me any questions you like. (laughs) Well, Miss Santos, it don't matter now, but... What did a dying Chakota priest, Ixcon, mean when it whispered to you, if you'd save Tula, you must strike at once? Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Santos. It don't matter now. It was just curiosity. No. I will answer that question, Senor Turner. Tula had served her purpose as Maya Nahib's agent. He had sent her over the world recruiting agents, acting as emissary, striking here, then vanishing, only to strike again at some other five place. Finally, she got to be known over the world. That was not good. So Maya Nahib was planning to destroy Tula. That was what the priest Iskan meant. Yeah, but what difference did it make to you? Why did he tell you? Two minutes to go. You'd all better be moving around the edge of the lake to that long, flat section of high ground. Mrs. Santos, you know where it is? See, I know. Come, I will lead the way. One minute. I'll join you as soon as I light the fuses. I'll have to run for it. Listen. She's coming. She's coming. The plane. The plane. Captain Friday, we are safe. She is coming. Gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. Here, here, don't give away now. Get these people to the open space. Look, it's dropping flares to find the landing place. Hurry and touch off the ground flares. See, si. light the fuses, then join us at once. Yes, yes, hurry. I have only half a minute left. She's coming down. She's coming down. She's safely down. There she is. There she is. Tula has come. Tula has come. Friday. Where's Captain Friday? It's time. It's time. 
I'm dynamite at the lake. The water's coming down on us. Get in the plane, quick. Run for the plane. Oh, everything is so mixed up. I, I don't understand what's happened. Here we are in an airplane piloted by Tula. Yeah, Tula, the girl who killed Robert. Tula did not kill Robert, Senor Turner. But I saw her. Did you see her fire the shot? Well, no, I, I had my back turned. But the moment after the shot, I turned and saw Tula with the gun. That was the werewolf's work. He killed your brother, Robert, and used Tula as a decoy, in case the police were put on the trail of the killer. The moment after you had seen Tula, she was whisked away. The werewolf used Tula over and over again as a blind for his dirty work. That is the reason Tula's name is known in every police department in the country. Can you prove that, Mrs. Santos? I can remove every stain from her character. Oh, look. Look below. We're over the sacred city. The water's filling up the cauldron of lava. It's already throwing hot steam into the air. Tula, you better get this ship out of here quick. Things are going to happen. Oh, the people must be going crazy down there. Oh, the poor things. It is the only way. We sacrifice these few to save the many. There, hear that? That's the first explosion. We are not out of danger yet. When the big blow-up comes... Hey, what's those noises? The sacred city's gone. It's blown up. Yeah, but that whistling noise. That's part of the sacred city whizzing by. We've started a new volcano. Those are tons and tons of rock and dirt being thrown into the air. Well, what if one of them should hit us? Then it's just too bad for us. Man, that Tula babe sure can't pilot a plane, can't she? Look how steady her hand is. Well, she's got plenty of nerve. Bayana Heap saw that she had splendid training. She will get us through. Listen to that. We're leaving the fireworks behind. Oh, man, I'm glad of that. Diving and zooming among those hunks of the sacred city got on my nerves. At last. At last it is over. The sacred city and its diabolical rule of Maya Nahib are no more. We are safe. And now, Mrs. Santos, may I tell them about Tula? Something more about Tula? Huh, you haven't heard anything yet. Si, Capitan. You may tell them. Folks, Tula is the daughter of Mrs. Santos. Her what? Daughter? Yeah, but Mrs. Santos, why didn't you tell us before? Uh, just a moment, and I'll explain everything. So that's a mysterious link you've had with the Brothers of the Living Dead, Mrs. Santos. See, si, Dr. English. But Captain Friday will explain. At the time of the death of Dr. Roberto Santos, Mrs. Santos' husband, Maya Nahib also kidnapped their daughter, Tula, then only 17. Maya Nahib hated Dr. Santos for his great Chakota discoveries, and he took revenge on the doctor's wife and daughter. He knew that he could make Mrs. Santos suffer most by making the girl one of his agents. But she didn't have to be an agent, did she? Well, with his ancient knowledge, Maya Nahib was able to rule Tula's mind just as the master attempted to rule yours, Judith. Oh, how awful. Yes. Maya Nahib kept his hold over her and sent her to all parts of the world to do his bidding. Always with the werewolf at her side to see that she didn't get away. And I have been fighting all these years to win my daughter, Tula, back from that horrible creature. It was a battle of minds. Mrs. Santos's mind against that of Maya Nahib. Still, the balance was in favor of Maya Nahib. Until you came into the picture, Capitan Friday. Yes. Yes, it was I who turned the tide of battle in favor of Mrs. Santos. You? What'd you do? Well, I... I'm afraid I went all out for Tula. Huh? I love Tula. Hey! I knew doggone well you was in love with that babe. Is that bad? Well, it's the first time it's ever happened since I've been tied up with you. You gonna marry the girl? Well, it's not part of the story. Anyway, the combined forces of Mrs. Santos' mind and my own was too great for Maya Nahib. Didn't you notice how Tula began to turn from being our savage enemy to a friendly ally? The first time was when she released me from the dungeon in the underground passage, remember? So that was Tula, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Then she helped us overpower the guards at the end of the stairway to the sun. So you knew Tula was coming in a plane to save us, and you let us go on thinking we was going to be destroyed with the sacred city. Yes, we didn't want to disappoint you in case she didn't come. Yeah, but Mrs. Santos, why didn't you tell us in the beginning that Tula was your daughter? Then we could have helped you more. Senorita English had told you that Tula killed Robert. Would you have had anything to do with me had you known that I was Tula's mother? Oh, no wonder you were frantic. Oh, I'm so thankful it came out all right. How brave you've been, Mrs. Hey. Santos. Hey, what's that? I just turned on the radio set. Oh. Listen. Hey, listen. Listen. 
Tremendous volcanic explosions are reported in the heart of the jungles of La Jolla, Chile. Earthquakes are being felt throughout South America, Mexico, and the United States. Reports of earthquakes have come in from as far south as Brazil. Scientists are puzzled by the sudden and unusual volcanic outbreak. The entire west coastline of South and Central America is undergoing a drastic change, causing tidal floods and severe landslides in the Panama Canal. Stand by. More late bulletins in just a moment. Jupiter, we did all that? See, si, it is too bad. But it is not one millionth the damage that would have befallen the world had we not done it. Yeah. Hey, Miss Santos, what was Maya Nahib going to do to the world? Destroy civilization? That was his one ambition, to destroy the whole of civilization and start life anew. Yeah, but how? It's one thing to want to do something like that and another thing to carry it out. Oh, do not be misled. The high priest had the power to carry out his plan. Are you certain? See, si. You saw all these great black planes gather at the sacred city. Planes swarming in from all parts of the world like great black flies. This is one of the planes we are riding in now. Yeah, of course. Tomorrow morning at dawn, these planes were to have taken off from the sacred city to every part of the world carrying death. Death in great quantities. Yeah, but what kind of death? Senor Turner, Maya Nahi got hold of the key to a scientific fact that ancient wise men have known from the beginning of time. He knew that by exploding a single cell in the human body, he could unravel the entire body as a neither unravels a sweater. The planes were to have been loaded with a scientific powder capable of breaking down flesh cells. Hundreds of these planes were to fly over the entire world dropping this powder. The moment a speck of that powder touched the skin, the person attacked would begin to disintegrate. Oh, how terrible. So fast did the powder work that the entire world would have been dead before modern science could have begun research for something to combat the plague. Yeah, but what about the Chakotas who were to distribute the powder? They were protected by a lotion spread upon their body. The powder lost its effectiveness after two or three weeks. All the Chakota had to do was stay out of the infected areas during that period or else keep bathing the protecting lotion. Oh, that's almost beyond human belief, Mrs. Santos. I know. And yet it was true. Horribly true. Well, then the catastrophe predicted by the shadow of the Gila monster on the sun was prevented, after all. The catastrophe predicted by the Gila monster on the sun has taken place, Senor Turner. What? Well, I thought the destruction of civilization was the catastrophe predicted. We certainly saved the world. What, Senor Turner? Have you stopped to think of what the world has lost? Well, no. The sacred city was the last living evidence of the birth of civilization. In the sacred city was all the history, the documentary evidence, the mysteries and the secrets of the past. Everything that the scientific world so longs to know. Don't speak of it. It makes me deathly sick when I think of the treasures we've destroyed. So the prophecy did come true. The prophecy was fulfilled. See, down to the last bitter dregs, the prophecy is fulfilled and the story is finished. Next week, you'll meet Captain Friday and Skip Turner deep in the strange, death-dealing, dismal swamp of South Carolina. You'll hear the opening episode of It's Dismal to Die, a story of swamp life and the people who live on the verge of sudden and violent death. Watch for It's Dismal to Die next week at the same hour. They are right. Next week, um, starting at... Oh, um, for those of you that are, that are watching right now, um, if you watch the old video, the vid VOD videos on demand, um, the videos I have left, I had done, was it 19 hours of adventures by Morse and, um, what's the, uh, I Love Adventure radio series, um, for all day yesterday until, uh, early this morning. Starting next Sunday, Sunday morning at 1 a.m., just after... The old, uh, we do the old time classic movies on Saturday night into Sunday morning. We're going to switch over and do old time radio shows start at 1 a.m. on Sunday morning all the way throughout the day on Sunday. We're going to finish up the uh, 130 plus episodes of I Love of Adventures by Morse and I Love a Mystery. 
and then we're going to do another ser radio series probably mysterious traveler and i think each sunday and monday we'll be doing a different radio series um just going non-stop with it i'll be lurking in the background so i won't be live too much to be chatting but i will answer any questions in the chat room it'll just take a while but i at least we'll have the uh, radio show going all the time so while you guys are doing whatever you want to do in the background you have something to listen to something pretty much intriguing and hopefully inspiring for those who like to write or who are looking for ideas for stuff um so we're going to end this stream now we will be back later tonight I'm not sure what time, maybe 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 6.30. We're going to be con continuing and hopefully completing uh, Cognition, an Erica Reed thriller game. And then the rest of the week, I think we'll be streaming Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. And then I'm not sure the rest of the week uh, yet, but we'll see. Um, we might do... Uh, either a full motion video game on Saturday, Tuesday night, or we may start a game called Sacred Fire. It looks like it's an interesting game. Um, so thank you everyone for stopping by. Thank you, Matt Maniac. Thank you, Cappy. It's good to see both of you. Uh, thank you, Matt Maniac 77. Good health and good fortunes to both of you. I have to get going now, unfortunately. Um, we'll be back later tonight. I'm so sorry to have to say good night so quickly or goodbye so quickly, but I uh, got to help my dad with a few things and then uh, start making dinner. So uh, thank you everyone for stopping by. I appreciate all of you. Good health and good fortunes. I hope you're having a great day today and I hope we'll have see you again soon. Have a good one, says uh, Matt Maniac 77. Hi, says T with Capybara. Hi, T with Capybara. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you had a great weekend and your family is doing well. Um, please send me a, um, a whisper. Let me know how you all are doing and uh, I will reply back as soon as I can. Thank you again everyone for stopping by. Much appreciated. Have a great day.